Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Jay with Anointed Radio, and we are here, like always. We're going to start off in normal fashion, and our normal fashion is we're going to come out of Second Second Timothy two and thirteen, where it says, "If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. He will always keep." his promises. God will keep his promise to you. No matter how far you stray, no matter how much you've done, he keeps his promise for you. He's faithful to his promise. So no matter what happens, no matter what you think, no matter what you're going through, he stays and gives you a blessing. He stays and gives you new grace and mercy every morning. He stays blessing you even when you don't deserve it god blesses you so that you can see what consistency and what faith should look like amen amen dear father god we just thank you god god we ask you to come into the room i shut today god we just ask you to just be able to be in the midst as we go into and, and, and have this topic tonight, God. God, let us be able to reach the unreachable, teach and teach more, even be able to stretch out to the farthest corners that does not know about you, God. Let us be able to expand our territory for anointed radio so that we could be able to truly be able to show your gospel, God. God, let something be said tonight that could be able to heal restore and to give new revelation to somebody tonight god god we thank you for everything that you're doing we thank you for all the things that you're going to do god god just be able to enlarge our territory to be able to reach people that really need to hear your word where they can say what can i do to be saved god we ask you to just be in the midst be in the midst to be able to bring change to be able to break chains and to be able to bring things anew so god we just thank you we glorify you we give you all the glory and all the praise and we say that all in jesus precious name amen 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 this is pastor jay like always i got something to say what i got to say is this you can find me at anointed jaylon on all social media platforms instagram twitter facebook all that good stuff even clubhouse another place you can find me is at um yeah, I think that's really it. You can find me at my um, most active page would be my Instagram at Anointed Jaylon. Hit me with a DM. Hit me with some questions, prayer requests, all that good stuff. Make sure you go ahead and check me out. Another person you want to check out is everybody's favorite auntie, Dr. Marvinetta Clay, where you could go to follow her at um, Clay Marvinetta, Marvinetta Clay, or DrMarvinettaClay.com. Um, you can check out my other co-host, Chris Johnson at sing chris j all all social media platforms sing chris j or his website at sing chris j.com you can check out chiquita andrews where um you can find her at chiquita andrews on all social media platforms um another person you can check out is boss barbie where boss barbie you can find her at um boss underscore barbie with all of the latest and greatest updates of sports you know anything sports las vegas based you could be able to check out boss barbie on all of those platforms and um today we're going to go into a topic that's kind of deep and near and dear to my heart and that is about pride and pride is a big topic due to it stops you from your blessings a lot of times it robs you from your blessings. And we're really going to go in depth into it. I got some notes. I got some things that we could really um, talk about so that you could kind of reflect on some things. If you're dealing with pride, if you're dealing with people with pride, you could be able to know how to deal with the situation. Because a lot of times we get mad at the person, but we need to get mad at the spirit. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, um, I want everybody to know, make sure you go check out the Las Vegas Raiders. Make sure you check out um, the Aces. Um, Make sure you check out um, who else we got out there, the Aviators, the Las Vegas Lights. We have um, also we have, um, well, am I missing? Oh, and the Golden Knights. So make sure you go check out all Las Vegas sports where they are in doing the great things here in the city. Um, If you haven't known, um, our coach, Joe Gruton, for the Las Vegas Raiders has resigned and they're in the hunt for a new coach. So 
You know how that goes. If you're a Raider fan out there, you know that this has happened before. And Ashley, he went to another team, Tampa Bay, and went to the Super Bowl. So hopefully we're not repeating history. We actually could get a coach and keep the momentum. I know we've had some rocky past games. We lost to um, the Chicago Bears and to the Chargers, but we could be able to change that up coming up soon. The Aces lost um, in the finals as well. But we're going to get on back up, and we're going to keep going because Las Vegas sports is still here, and we're still Vegas strong. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, we're going to go into some music. Um, I wanted to congratulate Pastor James Maple, y'all. He got the number one on the Billboard charts with It Shall Pass. So we're going to go ahead and play a little bit of that, go into the mix and play um, some of my good friends. We're going to play the, uh, David and Tiffany Spencer. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of Dr. Marvinetta Clay. We're going to play a little bit of I Got a Slip Away because, you know, shout outs to my music where you could go find my music on all digital platforms, um, Apple, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, and all that good stuff. You can find me at Jaylon Calhoun, J A Y L O N Calhoun. Find Slip Away, Wake Up, Bless My Team Rep, Jesus, um, and all that good stuff. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and play uh, Pastor James Maple with It Shall Pass, and we're going to come back at 7. 30. It's gonna be a um it's gonna be some a lot of good music. I want to just kind of do a, some good music today. So y'all can get in y'all spirit, putting y'all playlists and know what y'all want to listen to when you're working out, when you're in the car, when you're listening to your gospel and you need to hear a word, go ahead and check it out. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Pastor Jane Maple. It shall pass, and we'll see you in a minute. to Navasota, Texas on this one, y'all. Whatever you're going through in your life, God wants you to know right now that it will be all right. Say this thing. Your tests and trials, they come to make you strong. Mm. You'll be encouraged today, cause this won't last too long. Oh, this thing, Lord have mercy, I got good news for you. It shall pass, it shall pass. the impossible look back over your life and see where the lord has brought you from be encouraged today because it won't last too long all of your test and trials, they come just to make you strong. This too, this too. Yeah. Yeah. come on, say it shall pass. living witness it shall pass put your hands together and help me say it yes it shall pass listen you can't stay in that situation forever it has to change say yes Believe it and know it. Yes, say it. Yeah, Lord. We've been made and took our life, but joy is gonna come to the morning light. It will. Yes, it will. I know a lot is going on in the world right now, but it 
shall pass. Don't you dare give up. Because we're coming out of this thing. I need you to hold on. Say yeah. In a way. Oh, 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 yeah. I'm a believer in his word. Where it says no weapon. Against you shall prosper it will. Yes, it will. Say it will. Say yes. Listen. That bad relationship. Your child in trouble. You're going crazy. Even in financial struggle. But look toward the hill. From which cometh your hair, all of your hair comes from the Lord. And we I'm a living witness, it will. Yes, it will. The old preacher said something like this Be not dismayed. Anybody been through some storm? Anybody been through the rain? And when God brought you out, open up your mouth and say, I thank God for saving me. After all that I have been through, I've seen what God can do. He's been my strength and power. There's no way I can be. Thank you. 
everybody make sure that you go and follow everybody who's playing um J- pastor james mabel dr marvin and clay and larry reed with that being said we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna bring boss barbie on she came on in um she's gonna give you a little update boss barbie welcome Oh, man. So, here is something crazy. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Keep keep on talking, Boss Barbie. Um, keep on talking, Boss Barbie. Yeah, can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you, Boss Barbie. Nope. Oh. Yeah, you was on mute. Yeah. Your no, fault. The, the, the headphones were on, but my mic was off. I am so sorry. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, okay, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm checking myself. Like, okay, we're going to get this correct. Everybody, Boss Barbie, welcome back up on hey. stage. Hey. And- see, see, y'all, I am just all out of sorts. This surgery got me really bent. Like, I had surgery on my knee last week, and, you know, I ain't been right since. <laughs> But um, I'm going to be all right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, um, you know, well, since, I know you have some updates. Yeah. You, you know, about. all I can do is sit here and prop my leg up and watch sports all day. Of course. Uh, if you didn't know, the Aces season tragically ended last Friday. And I did crutch to the stadium. I had to be there because I thought we was about to do it. I thought we was going to another finals. But um. Man, heartbreak, heartbreak struck. You know, they got the run in their mouth when they was up 10, and um, they was talking to the wrong one. And <laughs> she went off, and so did the rest of her team, and they playing in the finals right now against the Sky. So, um, you know, uh, they already lost their assistant coach, Tanisha Wright, to the Dream. She is now their new head coach. So best wishes to her and congratulations. Um, I pray that, um, you know, her team and accepts the same wisdom that she provided for the Aces because, you know, um, every time you talk to the Aces player, they all talk about Tanisha and Coach Wright and what she does for them and, you know, the the advice that she gives them to, you know, develop and better their game. And um, so, yeah, you know, best wishes to her and uh, we'll still be watching. And, um, you know, as far as the Raiders, uh, I know Pastor Jay spoke briefly on the uh, Coach Gruden situation. Um, I blame that for part of their loss 
this week. So um, we definitely get a pass because we had a lot of distractions going on in the locker room. Players finally have broken silence and decided to speak on the situation today. And um, they're just ready to move forward. And um, so is the fan base. Um, I had a chance to talk to a couple of fans on Twitter and gain some more followers on Twitter from Raider Nation and uh, they are all very happy with the decision that coach is gone Um, there is no place for hate in this world and let alone in the NFL and I'm glad that we have a fan base and an owner that you know recognizes that you know us as a unit you know are stronger together than we are separate um, so, you know, they, they got rid of that bad apple. So let's see, you know, what turns up, but, uh, pray for y'all other football teams that y'all owners or coaches ain't about to be revealed in that, uh, Washington investigation. Cause that, that might turn out pretty bad. Um, and on good terms, the Las Vegas Knights are trending for, of course, their pregame show, but. They looking like a Stanley Cup championship team again this year. So um, I'm really hoping that they they really stick to all the expectations uh, this year because I can't take disappointment in hockey. That That's a whole different level. Like, because the fact that this team has brought me into that world and, you know, got me into it. You know, I'd be ready to fight at the games. Like they allow the fight in the games. I'm I'm ready to go after yeah, the game if we lost. You'd be like already <laughs> trying to fight. And you know what <laughs> with, with uh with the Golden Knights, um, one thing that I've seen is that they are a great team. They've been to the uh playoffs multiple times multiple since times. inception of the team. So it, it they mm-hmm. they have what they need, they just need that last little push. Yeah. Where they need to go. Yeah. Yeah. But um, hey, and if you didn't know, there's getting a major league soccer team here. Um, so I mean, it's it's a lot of sports happening in Vegas and you know, a lot of sports to come to Vegas. So it's it's gonna be exciting. Y'all need to get out here and see these games because it's a whole show aside from the actual game that's going on. The pregame and halftime shows are definitely something to see too. That's the stuff that you can't see on TV. Amen. Yeah. So with that being said, everybody make sure you go follow the lovely boss Barbie on all social media platforms at boss underscore Barbie on Instagram and Twitter. Two and underscores y'all two underscores. <laughs> two underscores. Correction two underscores. Make sure you follow her, um, um, Boss Barbie. I'm actually even working on my little Twitter skills. Um, I've been tweeting all about you know my ship. You know, if you ain't bought ship, it's time to buy and hold, change your life forever. Just saying. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and talk about pride. Pride was a big topic today because I see so many people struggle with this, and pride comes vanity. Pride comes um, low self-esteem. Pride is something that really can um, stumble in someone's fall. We all know the famous scripture where it says, pride cometh before a great fall. Um, Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit uh, before stumbling. Pride is something that causes you to go in defense mode. Whatever that trauma that you went through in your life caused you to go into survival defense mode where you're like, you know what? I don't have to worry about it. I'm good. It's cool. But you don't see how toxic and poisonous pride can be. Um, When pride comes, then comes dishonor. But when the humble is wisdom, when you start humbling yourself and knowing that you're not perfect. You know, a lot of times we, you know, confidence could go into overload where it turns into vanity, where it turns into pride. We're talking about pride where it comes into being toxic. A lot of times pride leads you to other things and it opens yourself up to a whole lot of other spirits that can be so toxic in your life because then you can't hear nobody. When someone is dealing with pride, you cannot hear wisdom 
Let me say that again. When you, you when you're dealing with pride, you cannot hear wisdom because a lot of times when you're dealing with pride, when someone is trying to tell you something that benefits you or to be able to uplift you or to be able to get you through, you can't hear it because you have already in your head has said that doesn't pertain to me. You already in your head have said I don't need to hear this. I'm good. It is what it is. I feel like the pride anthem is saying it is what it is. It's not facing what you're dealing with. It's not facing your relationship. It's not facing your family. It's not facing the things that you're going through personally from past, present, and future trauma. It is just saying it is what it is. Let's move on. I know in the black community, we are very famous in saying, you know, let's just keep going and act like nothing has happened. But when it comes to pride, pride is toxic because it's 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 caused a lot of times because of miscommunication. You are listening, but you're not hearing. You're in a situation where you have conversations and it does not resonate to you. You know, a lot. One thing I wanted to just kind of talk about is in Proverbs 29 and 23, it says a man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will obtain honor. When you have pride, you automatically go back to, I'm going to treat people the way they treat me. I'm going to cut people off. I'm going to do them dirty. I'm going to get them before they could get me. And then you, your standard of living, the standards and morals that you have, you start bringing them down because you feel like they did me wrong. So I can't let nobody do me wrong. Pride will bring down your morals and standards in your life. Because you will feel like I, I, I'm i good. I don't need nothing. I don't need nobody. And that is a dangerous, dangerous, everybody out there say dangerous, dangerous mindset to have. Because when you have pride and you start isolating yourself, you see that that is a trick of the enemy. Why am I saying this? Because you can start seeing people that have the spirit of pride because they start isolating themselves and start being on their lonesome. Because somebody did you wrong, you start sitting there and automatically assuming that everybody did you wrong. You start assuming all these bad things that it it might not even been that way. It could have been a miscommunication. You see how miscommunication could bring pride. And when you humble your spirit, you obtain and obtain your honor, who you are and whose you are. Pride can kill your title. Pride can kill your gift. Pride can kill relationships you have with people. Pride can kill every blessing that God has bestowed on you because you are on self-destruct mode. And all you see is what is negative and not what is positive. We cannot isolate ourselves in this spiritual battle. You do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with spirits and uh, principalities that are coming after you. The enemy is sending spiritual attacks against you. And pride is something dangerous that could come into your life and wreck up everything that you have tried to build up. Have we all seen the Christians have came to the church? They, they, they are, they've fallen, they're broken. God has restored them, but they get a little prideful. They start realizing, hey, I did it myself. I don't need the church. I don't need people. I don't need your prayers. I don't need this. And they start dramatically falling. They stop going to church. They start going back to their habits. They start being double-minded where they're like, well, I'm, I am I put Christian principalities and, and worldly views. They start getting confused and then they start isolating themselves because they're like, I don't need church. The church is in my heart. That is the most dangerous scripture to quote when you're in a self-destructive mode, because it's just like when you're sick, if you need help, who are you going to go to? If you know you can't do good by yourself, you need help. It says, do not forsake the assembly. What does that mean? Do not forsake the other Christians that you're supposed to get your help from. If you're going through self-destruct, if you're going through this, your pride is what is is what's going to push you away from people. 
because you're going to be like, I don't need to hear you. I don't need to hear the sermon. I don't need to go in church. I don't need to do this. But pride is very shifty because what it does, which I was going to say earlier, is it isolates you so that you can be in your own mind. And the devil loves your mind because once he get to your mind, your body follows. And then he starts putting all these assumptions and all of these fake in the windows, in your head, where you think this is how it is, but it's not true. Because if you truly wait and look around in your life, you can start seeing what God has done for you. A lot of times we put the same sad song on situations that's not true. And one thing I want, I, I want people to think about is this. You have to be aware. The devil is like a roaring lion looking to whom he can de devour, right? If you look at the animal kingdom and look at what lions do, what do they do? They look out for the weak and they look out for the young. In this spiritual journey, the devil is looking out for the weak, the ones that let down the armor of God, that got some little holes in their armor. You usually strong and confident and, 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 and you know the word, but on today, you're weak. You don't want to talk about God. You don't want to hear from God. And the devil like, I got you. And he starts putting things automatically in your head. See, the church don't love you. See, and, and he uses false pretenses for you to really think that no one loves you. But if you think about what God has brought you from, if you think about the people that has done you right, have you ever thought about how people could talk about what you've not done for them, but they forget about all the things you did do for them? That's crazy, right? Because uh, everybody could focus on the negative and put so much energy, so much. I, I had a situation, I'll leave it nameless, where no matter all the good things I did, somebody wanted to talk about how I didn't give a piece of cake. And I said, we had to wait to eat a piece of cake. And they were mad. I mean, how could you deny some food to a piece of cake? And all I said was, we have to wait to eat the piece of cake because, you know, we have an order of how we're doing things in the kitchen and blase, blase. But they never talked about the good things of how I fed everybody. They didn't ever talk about how in that situation, I did help people. But no, they talked about the negative thing. And we do that in our life where we talk about everything negative and we just flood our minds with all these negative thoughts. And then you wonder why all these things that come to you is negative because you're reaping what you sow. You attracting what you're putting out there. You're speaking death all out there negative. Oh, I'm not this. I'm not that. They not this. They not that. They can't help me. That's prideful. You're prideful because you, you can't see the situation for what it is. And a lot of people become prideful. It's going to hurt somebody when people are trying to hold you accountable. You can't tell me who, what to do. You ain't my daddy. You ain't my mama, but you want to be held accountable. Consistency is a very rare thing nowadays. God wants you to be consistent, not to lean on to your own understanding, but, but to trust him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Trust him, right? Paraphrasing. Another thing, we take ourselves too seriously. Everything should not be the apocalypse because you fail. You got to learn. You're growing while learning through things. So just because something happened to you don't mean you got to get all uptight. Pride rears his head when people can't admit fault. Oh, my goodness. Ah! When people can't admit fault of I was wrong and I'm sorry. People nowadays still can't say sorry. They'll be like, well, bro, it is what it is. You know, I, I brought it back. I told you pride, love that word, that catechism. It is what it is. It's not because if you can't see you're wrong, you'll continue to do it. God is trying to teach you in your life how to grow and to be able to overcome things. But if you cannot see the issue, you cannot grow. That's where pride comes in, because when you are prideful, no one could tell you nothing. You can't learn nothing and nothing that is said applies to you. 
I'm, I know I'm talking because I'm, I, 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 I see y'all out there. Y'all, the brain is twirling, y'all. But another thing is ask the right questions. A lot of times in miscommunications is not people are not asking the right questions. People are asking these general questions that are not serving to that person. Pride pops in in confusion and miscommunication. So you have to be precise. Fourth thing, you have to be open-minded. A lot of times, pride comes with being so closed-minded. It's, if it's, it's my way or the highway. It's what I think. It's what I do. Whatever you say that challenges me, no, nah, that ain't right. When did that ever <laughs> come in play that you're going to learn something by thinking you know everything? Let's talk about the music industry. I've been in the music industry for a little while. How can you say you know everything when the industry changes every day? You're a singer. You can always learn. If you're a rapper, you can always learn. If you're an actor, you can always learn. The industry changes constantly. That's like saying, well, I've been selling tapes since 1990. Well, that's dope. We don't buy tapes no more. And a prideful person would be like, well, I got it. I'm good. We have to get out of our mindset of being so closed minded and thinking that there's only one way to do things. Close, closed minded people are the most prideful people because they can't hear you. They listen to you to respond, but they can't hear you to digest what you're saying to be able to put the application in their life. How many people go to church and they hear the sermon? They say it's amen. They hear the pastor. They're like, he's talking, he's preaching good so that they can use it as an arsenal to speak against somebody else. So they could use the word to speak against somebody else, but they're not using it to apply in their own life to free themselves in some things that they have not come to grips in. How many years is going to pass by until you finally face yourself and your shortcomings and you're going to say, you know what? I got some ugly ways. I've done people wrong. I've not always been right. It, when you get to that, that's when healing comes. When you get to that, that's when you can finally get to grips of knowing where your growth is going to come because God can finally deal with you. There, I know we live in a social media world where everybody thinks they perfect. We got filters to cover our flaws. We have filters to cover up our, 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 our pain and our suffering. But God sees past that where you have to get to knowing that you have to face yourself and years are just going to pass by and the situation is still going to be there no matter what you dress it. No matter what vo what you try to cover it with emotional overdrive, you know, a lot of people just like to be angry. They feed off that. A lot of people love to feed off drama. A lot of people love to feed off emotion. They always got to be sad. They got to be crying all the time. They feed off that. There's people out there that got to have a substance that they got to abuse. There's people that have gluttony that they abuse. Anything more than moderation is abuse. We have to get to knowing how to face ourselves? We have to learn how to listen to what we're doing, what we're saying. A lot of us just talk without thinking. That's a, a pride trait right there. You talking because you think you know everything. Oh yeah, this and and I know I'm right and 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 Lord have mercy, all of the Facebook scholars and Google scholars that have not picked up a book or did detailed research. Everybody is an expert of Google, but when you come into your own life, you're not an expert. You could Google everything but how to be better. You could Google everything but how to fix yourself. No one's going to, like I tell my kids, no one's going to take care of you better than you. But it's not going to happen until you start doing those things. You can look up how to get over depression. You can look up how to get out of pride prideful ways. You can look up how to heal the first steps of healing, but you have to take the effort. Most of the time, pride is driven by poor self-worth and shame. 
You did something that you will not admit that was wrong, that you know was wrong, but you want to be right. Pride has killed so many marriages because they couldn't communicate and say, you know what? I was wrong. But everybody got to be right. Everybody don't have to be right. There's a thing called compromise. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there, there's no such thing as everybody going to be right. You're not always going to be right. No one's going to be perfect. We all fall short. We all have issues. We all have situations that we deal with internally. The other thing is you got to start taking care of yourself. If you got self, some, some self-esteem issues, self-worth issues where you're not really being able to come to grips with what you're dealing with, you got to go and start dealing with those things and coming to God. Because a lot of times we fail in taking care of self. Self Self-care does not mean cutting people off. Self-care does not mean being petty. Self-care means taking the steps of healing yourself. Go, when you have those thoughts and you you deepen your thoughts because you ain't dealt with something, not deal, going to a substance so that you forget about it, not going to an overdrive or, or doing deflection to talk about somebody else. Because we all know that person that could talk about everybody else, but when it comes to them, they can't talk about it. I'm trying to free somebody today, y'all. I'm trying to free somebody today because we've dealt with so many things where we have adopted we adopted wrong views of God. God is faithful to his promises, but do you know his promises? Do you know who God is in your life? What he could do in your life? We have to understand that we have to adopt the correct view of God. When we're prideful, we distort who God is. We forget who God is, what he's done for us. And we got to start revising some of our false beliefs that nobody could tell you nothing. (laughs) I could tell you this. You're not better than nobody and nobody's better than you. We all go through something. We might be in different financial status. We might be in different uh, fame status. We might even be in different states and in different areas, but nobody's better than you. We all go through issues. Amen. First Corinthians four and seven. What gives you the right to make a such judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? And if everything you have is from God, why do you boast as if it was not a gift? God gift that to you so that you can help others. I'm I'm freeing somebody. A lot of times people think, oh, I got all this money. I'm I'm just going to do me. You know, God gave that to you so that you can stop worrying about you and maybe bless other people. Amen. Thinking that you're indispensable. Guess what? There's going to come a time where you're going to have to sit down. A lot of people hold on to the throne. We see it in ministry. We see it in um, pastors, bishops, singers, actors, where they know that they're like, no, I'm not sitting down. My time's not over. But God wants you to pass that talent to somebody else. What is your legacy? Legacy is to be able to know when to pass the torch. Mm. Are you lacking in passing the torch to the person that's assigned to you? Because there's a person assigned to you that's waiting for you to pass the torch, but you keep holding it. God's telling you, let, let go. But you are still holding due to pride. Amen. And one thing I I want us to kind of remember is that pride is a sin. A lot of times we just open ourselves up to sin and it doesn't come just by one. It comes in hordes, y'all. And in a spiritual attack, you're opening up yourself for for pride because you guess what? You're you're going to from pride, you're going to start lying. Then you're going to start stealing things. And then you're going to start making justifications and 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 justification is lying still. We can't sit and think that we could just be proud uh, uh, and proud meaning that we ain't, can't, ain't did nothing wrong, ain't did nobody wrong, and everybody did what was me. Guess what? You got to start repenting for your sins. 
That's the first step. Admitting and admitting that it, it, you're sinning. Yes, you are. White lie, justifications. The truth don't need support. You know what you're doing. Get out of your funk. Start seeing it for, you know, because one thing I've realized, people that's prideful could give the best advice that they can't take. Just saying it. They could give the best advice to someone else, but they can't take their own advice because they don't think there's nothing wrong with them. They could give some great advice, but cannot apply it. They can know the knowledge, but cannot apply it in their life to help them be free of things. And you got to know that humility, humility isn't just saying, oh, well, I'm going to tell my resume. Oh, I don't know. Humility is knowing that I could do something back, but why? I could be petty, but why? I could say something that could hurt someone's feelings, but why? Because the main thing we're supposed to remember, and I've been talking about this for weeks in and weeks out, because God's displeased with us. There's a song in church that people sung for generations, and it said, I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. Can I tell you something today? That's a lie. A lot of people have not treated everybody right the way that they want to be treated. Like what it says scripturally, treat people the way you want to be treated. Love thy neighbor as you love thyself. We have to get to a point of knowing that once you can start bringing love in and supplementing the pettiness, supplementing the pride, the lies, and everything that comes with it, because the enemy is just trying to use you as an example to show other people that's trying to know about God, that you're fake, that you're a phony. Why are you giving the devil that benefit? Because he has no power, but he's using you to prove a point. Aren't you getting tired of being used? Aren't you getting tired of being that example of a bad person, bad guy, bad woman? It's time to take your peace back. It's time to take your joy back in that situation because God wants more from you. You're being prideful. It's having a temper tantrum. You're having a three-year-old temper tantrum because you're mad about a situation that you won't let go. God told you to let go of that long time ago, but because you can't hear nothing, you're not letting it go. And we have to start fleeing from temptation. That's the daily steps of getting rid of pride. How do we flee from temp- being tempted to being prideful, to being petty, to being all these negative traits that's not of God? You have to focus on your relationship with God. That means you have to pray. You got to read his word. You got to fast. I lost half y'all when I said fast. You have to flee temptation by simply focusing on your relationship, on your daily relationship by praying, reading his word, and fasting. Second thing. You have to latch on God's promises. Amen. You have to latch on God's promises. Third, you have to establish a safeguard. You have to start making boundaries because pride cometh before a great fall. The, the, God tests you, but the enemy tests you too. Because he hears everything you say. I'm a mighty woman of God. I'm a mighty man of God. I, I go to church every Sunday. I know the word. But do you know the word in hard times? Do you know the word when you're going through something in your body? Can you still pray when you lost everything? Job was a testament and a roadmap of knowing what to do when you're going through hard times. When the enemy is trying to test you on every level, your patience, your spirituality, your body, your, your physical with, and, and sickness come in your body, can you still give God the praise? Because you're still here. Even if he don't do anything else, he's already done enough. You have to be able to understand that you are victorious in God. You have to understand that no matter what you've done in your life, you can still learn. You still can be, you can still keep growing. You can still keep establishing who you are. 
But the first step is knowing who you are. And the second step is knowing whose you are. If you know that you're a child of God, start speaking as one. You're the head, not the tail. You have to know that you're royalty, that God has made you to be more, to have more than what people have told you you can have. If you believe everything that a person say, you are limiting yourself. Pride doesn't bring you any happiness. And I just want to close with this. Pride will rob you of every piece of joy that you're trying to establish. No matter if it's in your job, in your relationships with people, significant others, your family, with your parenting status, with your children. Pride never did anything for you but make you lonely. If you want to be alone and and have so many things missed out because you're so prideful, because pride kills your character. What is your character? Your character is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Are they going to say great things? Are they going to say you're so prideful that nobody could tell you nothing? Nobody could be that you got the prima donna attitude. That's pride. You're letting the enemy win with your own attitude. It's time to take your power and authority back to speak. I declare and decree anybody under the sound of my voice that's dealing with a prideful attitude that God will set you free, that God will bring you out to see the truth, the truth in you, to see your purpose and what you are determined to do. So that it could be clear that no matter what comes your way, no matter what people say, no matter what person tries to tear you down, no matter what is taken away from you, that God will be able to give you a purpose. Because a person without a purpose distracts themselves with pleasures. So it's time to stand up. It's time to be able to know that you're victorious. It's time to know that no matter how far you think you've fallen, like they talked about with the prodigal son, it's always a good time to come home. It's always a good time to come back to God because he's waiting with open arms and a fresh robe and rings on every finger for you so that you can know that you are somebody and you have a purpose and that God has something for you, it's time to accept it and stop running. Because pride's only going to lead you to a lonely road, a lonely road that's going to get you to a point where you're going to feel like you missed out. You want to live after, especially after this pandemic, it's time to let go of pride. Teachers, mentors, stop thinking that passing the torch is losing. Passing the torch is winning. Pushing somebody up is winning. We're not competing. We're uplifting. Amen? Amen. So I I just wanted to bring that out there. Anything that you need help in, in your life, especially in this 21st century, is a Google away. You can Google so many things and scriptures, Bible verses, anything that you're going through. You can Google that and you don't have to keep living any type of way. Amen. With that being said, I want you to know that God has more for you. And as soon as you lay down that burden of pride, Watch how your life will change. Watch how the blessings will overflow that it will just be an amount that you can't even hold. But it's time to let go. It's time to forgive yourself. It's start the time to forgive others. How can you be prideful when you got issues? We all do. So with understanding that, learn how to put yourself in other people's shoes. But with that being said, Make sure you download the Anointed Radio app. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at LV Anointed uh, Radio. Make sure you check us out at anointedradionetwork.com uh, and our app at Anointed Radio app where you get 24-hour gospel 
and make sure if you want to donate to anointed radio make sure you go ahead and be a blessing and sow a seed in the ministry and hit us up on cash app at cash app dollar sign anointed radio network but with that being said much love i want y'all to be free and free indeed because god got more for you because you're intended to have more than your than what your family has ever been seen or shown god has a purpose for your life it's time to accept it with that being said y'all have a great night y'all y'all have a great night and just know the raiders are coming back some way somehow and make sure you download um follow us on spotify i'm about to i'm about to miss out on the whole part it was getting deep make sure you follow us on all podcast platforms spotify iHeartRadio, pandora everything but title because jay-z be hating and um y'all have a great night simple as that see y'all next week bye y'all